So welcome to uh, Watercolor Studio uh, 42, and uh, it's a new year starting off. And uh, so I thought I'd do uh, a subject that uh, I've been asked to do, uh, requested to do, and uh, that's a winter scene uh, with some birch trees in it. So what I've done a, a little bit ahead of time, uh, what I do is take uh, some uh, strips of just regular masking tape and I put it on a piece of plexiglass and then what I do is uh, take a, an X-Acto knife or you could use a razor blade or anything and just slice some of that tape so it goes from, uh, you know, on an angle thick to thin. And then what I have to do after that is kind of pick at this and uh, take the uh, little strips of uh, masking tape and what I've done it ahead of time is put the uh, strips of masking tape onto my uh, watercolor paper. And usually I do um, um, an uneven number, it happened to be f five, one, two, three, four, five uh, trees that are gonna be birch trees. Now normally if you're doing a tree that has a darker color uh, bark on it or whatever, uh, you don't have to put the masking tape down. Uh, the only reason I put the masking tape down because I'm doing the birch trees and they're a lighter uh, gray or white color type of thing. And uh, so um, once I get the, those down, now they're going, uh, as far as the, uh, the pattern goes, everything's going right now vertically, up and down, up and down. So what I have to do is kind of slow it down a little bit and I, I introduce some diagonal uh, movement. You can make this like a little path. Uh, today I'm gonna to have it like a little brook or a stream that cuts back up and through here. You notice that I'm going on an angle, okay? And we're gonna have it kind of disappear up here somewhere, maybe almost a little about halfway of the paper. And that's gonna come across like that. Now, we, we do the same thing. It's kind of like a perspective where it goes from uh, thick to thin or thin to thick. And so we're going to have that little brook and stream cut down and through here and uh, just go off in that direction, kind of fan out a bit. Um, so um, now, I've got the tape on. I've protected the white of the uh, paper itself, the watercolor paper. and. Now it's just a matter of deciding where I want the light source to come from. So what I've done is I put some arrows out here on the tape, the masking tape, just to point so that the, um, the strongest light source would be coming from my left to right. So that means that if that's uh, the way it's going to be, then when I do the trees, then I'll put a little bit of the a cast shadow uh, on the uh, right side and keep the uh, left side of my uh, trees uh, lighter color. Then there'll, there'll be some markings that I'll put on. You can do those with a fine pen. I usually use a, a permanent ink pen, or you can use a very fine brush for some of the uh, texturing that you might put on the birch trees, you know, the bark of, of the birch trees. The bark is kind of, uh, kind of rough, it curls sometimes, it peels off and so forth if you've been out there where the birch trees are. Um, some parts of the country, <coughs> excuse me, some parts of the country there's very few uh, birch and uh, we, do, we do in New England have uh, qu quite, quite a few birch trees uh, throughout, uh, you know, the state of Massachusetts up into Vermont of course and New Hampshire and, and uh, Maine. So the only trouble is with birch trees, they're a very soft wood and they can't be damaged too much. They kind of snap off and we've been having some windy spells and snow and all that, that affects the, uh, the trees and uh, whatnot. So um, what I'm gonna do now, I'm just, I mentioned a, a little bit earlier, I have to decide where the, the light's coming from. So I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna start up at the top and just wet the paper with water. Just put some water on there. Doesn't have to be too fussy, just move it around. 
If you don't want it to dry too slow, don't leave too many puddles. I sometimes pat it a little bit dry with a paper towel, whatnot like that. Just pat it a little bit. And I'm going to start off with uh, uh, a little bit different. I brought a picture that I painted earlier, but I just use it for reference. I keep it up here. So um, every time I do something, it's always a little bit different. It's always something else that happens, or I've added something or left out something, usually the number of trees and whatnot, and how busy the background might be. So I'm just going to put a little bit of sky in. I'm just going to start off with some of my yellow up here, up in the corner. And I'm just going to go probably just a little ways across the paper, probably not half and half. I don't want to split it up too much. But it will be um, one way or the other. You can go a little bit a quarter or a third of the way. Or if you're going to do all the, chi, uh, the sky, rather, that color, then you can go uh, a little bit uh, further with the yellow. Okay, so we'll put a little bit of that in. We're going to put a little dash of orange into that. There you go, across here. And then uh, if you want, you could put even a little bit of red in that. It's kind of a... That will really warm it up a bit, quite a bit, with a little dash of red in the, that corner. Now we can we could put a little bit of the um, uh, blue sky or, or grayish blue. Uh, sometimes I use uh, ultramarine. If I'm not sure about it, I add a little phthalo blue, kind of the two blues together. So I'm just going to come across this way now with a little bit of the blue. And that could go into the uh, the uh, the, the uh, where the source of the light's coming from. Could be from the sun, obviously. <laughs> but uh, here we go. Put a little bit of that gray in there, and uh, whatnot. So if you don't like the shape of that, um, what I usually push sometimes I can take a little bit of the yellow and kind of push that out in to the uh, blue, kind of have it so soften into the blue. Uh, a lot of times I have to come back and hit it a little bit more because uh, watercolor, after it dries, it kind of dries out maybe 10 to 15 degrees uh, lighter when it fades out. As they fade out, what it, what it does, it kind of dissolves into the paper, watercolor paper. The paper that I use is watercolor, uh, uh, water for Saunders, and it's a 140, that's the thickness of uh, cold press. And cold press is just the, the surface uh, of the paper. They call it the tooth of the paper, how bump or, or, or uh, smooth it is. And this is cold press is in between being smooth and being a kind of a bumpy surface. The, the other two are called hot press, which is uh, uh, a smoother surface, and the other uh, paper is called a rough, because it is a little bit bumpier, the surface of the uh, paper. So that sky looks pretty good. It's kind of blending in there pretty well. And we might not see as much of that when I put in the background. Now, if I wanted to come down just a wee bit lower, maybe here, uh, it wouldn't hurt. I'm just going to add a little bit more down around here, just in case I need that to kind of warm it up there a bit. There we go, something like that. Now, um, after I put that in, now this this water or this little brook that I'm going to put in here, you can put a little dash of blue in just to remind us where where we are. Back there, it's a straight edge, and then we're going to kind of meandered down, zigzag down through here. And I'm putting it in very, very light at first. And we can always go darker if we have to. And that's going to come down through here. Now, as we come out to the bottom of the foreground, we can make that a little bit wider. We can make that a little bit wider through here and a little bit darker too. Okay, let's see if I can kind of blend this color out to the edges. Blue blue is sort of a stainer, so you have to kind of catch it in a hurry. Otherwise, 
it's hard to erase any of those lines in there. So that's why I have to kind of hit that kind of in a hurry. Take some of that out. Okay, like that. All right, go around the corner here, down by the edge. See how it stains very quickly. Very, very, it's very quick to try to stain. But we'll fix it up a little bit more later. Might go in there a little bit darker. Okay, so we got some of the, the little brook running through here. Now sometimes I leave little patches of white so that it looks like some little bit of floating ice there or something on the on the ice, the surface of the ice freezing in there. So sometimes I take a little scraper and run it through there or do it with the brush. Now, um, some of the other things we've got to do, uh, what I usually do is the background can be suggestive of uh, uh, more trees and probably uh, uh, it's going to be uh, more uh, like uh, pine trees or, or, or birch trees or something, not so much birch trees, but um, uh, like pine trees and fir trees rather than birch trees. We've got the birch in the foreground. Okay, so having said that, this can be a little bit of everything. Uh, I, I put a little bit of blue in, in there. You can add a little bit of yellow if you want to hint uh, uh, some green. And then I, I rely on my um, Payne's Gray, get, the, get that in there. So it's not really like, uh, it's got not a solid dark color, but it's just different shades of uh, color. Now we could put that in. Um, I'm gonna start over here. Now because I put the tape down, make sure I get it flat enough so no, no, paint doesn't get under it too much. Uh, I can go right over the tape. I can paint right over it. And uh, sometimes it doesn't look so great until you take the uh, tape off. So I can go right up here near the top, make it kind of look like little pointed fir trees back there. And I'm coming across down here. I, I don't like the backgrounds to be just flat. I like to break it up a little bit. So that's what I'm doing here, just kind of make it look like it's coming down the hill. And then we're going to put a little bit of that right across where the edge of the water is back there. Like that dot. And while I'm at it, let's push up into there. And again, uh, kind of go to a point and kind of suggest some of the trees. Again, I can go right over the top of the tape because I'm going to pull the tape off eventually. So you'll see what, what's happening with all that. Okay. Uh, this could be just an interesting background. Sometimes I dash a little bit more uh, color into it just to make it look more interesting back there. You know, right now I'm using a little bit of my raw sienna. Just drop some color into that gray. Um, sometimes you can leave a, a, a lot of white, depending on how much uh, you want to show of the, maybe some snow on the branches or whatever. But We'll, we'll do it similar to what I was working on, what I usually do. Let's fill that in, kind of make some of those little bushes go uh, a little bit more pointed like that. Shape of it, there you go. Make it, that shape a little bit interesting in there. So now down near the lower area, I can get a little bit deeper into here right into the background so it looks like uh, you can go further back into the woods that way okay here we are dash a little bit of color up in there well lately we've had uh, the weather it's been kind of like an elevator going up and down the temperature and and uh, we haven't had as much snow not that i'm too crazy about the snow, but um, it used to be, you know, when you're younger, you, you ask any young young children, they'll say to you, oh, I, I love the snow, I like to go sliding and skiing and skating and all that, and they love the winter, but you take, uh, when you get a little bit older, you kind of, kind of dread some of the, you just think about having to shovel and walk through all of that and 
uh, not so much fun as he, <laughs> not so much fun as it used to be. That's for sure. Okay. Now, what I did sometimes, I, I take a little bit of my uh, my quinacridone rose, which is actually a lizard crimson, and I drop a little bit of that in there just to warm up some of that background. Uh, and uh, when I do something like this, I always have to go over and repeat it somewhere else. See if I can get to some of that back there. I, I don't want to get too much in there. I'm going to be blocking out all my sun, sunlight. I get carried away with all that painting here. Okay, let's kind of have that kind of come down, down the hill a little bit in there. All right. This can be darker in here. That looks a little bit too light. It's, the darker you make that background a lot of times, it's, it's kind of creates the illusion that you can go further back into the painting and into the woods type of thing. So if you put in really some darker shades in there in, in places, you can really kind of go back into that density of the woods. And I just kind of jump around it's hard to tell exactly. I, I've got an empty spot here. I know I can put some branches later on to break that up, but right for, for now, I want to make that look somewhat interesting as far as the texture goes. So that's why I'm working a little bit over here. You know, one thing I'm glad, though, about, of course, the wintertime uh, is that uh, they're going to have the festival again uh, last year, uh, we didn't do it, and, and now they're going to bring it back. And uh, I know it's going to be uh, February 22nd. That would be on a weekend. And they have a good time uptown. It's around the museum area on Park Street, Gilbert Perry Square in that area. And um, I see the sign is up downtown. They're advertising it, promoting it. And so that's always fun to do, take in that type of thing. And what's nice about uh, the uh, winter festival, uh, we used to have a lot of fun with the summer one too, and uh, they started having it at Cape and Park, which is, I thought was an ideal location, uh, utilizing the park space and so forth. And uh, maybe that will come back this summer, I'm not sure. Always fun to get the community involved and in having all these activities going on. Okay, you see what I'm doing? Kind of doing a little bit of the background in there. Uh, now, um, what I have to do is, as when I pull the tape off, I've got to have some contrast because uh, if I'm going to pull the tape off, I, sh I have to still uh, show the, the shape of the uh, tree. So that's why I'm painting this solid, and I'm going over the tape. I'm going right over the tape. And uh, once I feel, I got an interesting little background going here. Um, you don't have to get too, too, too busy with it. What's happening here is that I did paint in the, uh, the sky and that's uh, still a little bit wet. I think that doesn't hurt if I fill that shape in there a little bit more. Okay, we'll see what we can do later on if we have to. There's always some little fussy thing that you have to kind of kind of put around with and see if it works. And like I was saying that uh, that uh, no matter what the subject is, you always handle it a different way. Uh, you can have people in the picture. Sometimes I don't. Normally, I don't put pe people in some of my paintings, but you can. Um, I'm just going to break that up in there, put some shadow, soften that out in the background. That line there doesn't look like it should be there, so what I do is I take the water and just erase that and soften the edges down. Okay, uh, let's see what else we can do. All right. Now, um, what I think I should do is uh, work a little bit uh, before I pull the tape. I've got to give uh, the, uh, 
the water, make that a little bit darker, um, the little brook. So I'm going to come down in through, where did I have that? Uh, oh yeah, I had it flatter in here where the source is sort of, water seeks its own level, so sometimes you have to have a kind of a flat area where the uh, source comes from. And then um, from there, uh, we're going to uh, come down through here, make the wa this much darker here in the water. And uh, I'm going to take a pe piece of my towel that's a little bit cleaner here and maybe blot some of this. See, w w the, the darker you go, the more you bring out the white of the uh, snow. That's what we want to do. And this, this can be a bank. You don't have to have it too flat. So you can kind of go on an angle uphill here. And come over here and then go around, out this way. Now, I'm going to just pull that away in a hurry so it doesn't settle in. You can leave some little patches in here for the, uh, maybe some, uh, some of the ice. Let's see what, what that looks like. And now we want to go around the corner here. A little bit darker, right in there. Just show the side of the bank of the uh, the uh, snow here on the edge of the water. Now I can come in and make that a little bit darker in places. Usually, what I do is just kind of pull, take the brush or even a, a piece of uh, plastic or something, and just scrape through that to make it look like uh, more like ice. Now. What we're going to also pick up is um, maybe some of that light coming through here. Uh, we can have some of that color just uh, kind of pick up and reflect on on the uh, on the uh, water area. Just add a little bit of that color, a little bit of the orange in there. Oops, needs more than that. That's. Yeah, still a little bit more of my orange here. All right, we'll put that in. Just to reflect some of that light coming through. And a little bit over into here, too. Now, by the time we get through here, we'll probably make the water show up a, a, a little bit stronger. I'm just putting it in, being on the cautious side here. Uh, I'm just putting in a little lighter at first. Now, um, usually water uh, seeks its own level, so it can't be kind of running uphill. So sometimes when you get into here, you got to kind of clean that out and make that a little bit flatter through there and then pull it back out. That blue is kind of bright, but I'm going to just let it stay there, use it somewhere else. I can always, there's one thing about watercolor, you can always erase it and um, kind of put it back in again, a little darker or different. Now if I've got that color there, I want to pick it up a little stronger down here too. Let's put some of that in here. So it doesn't look like I made a mistake up there, huh? We'll just fix that up. Here you go. Make it a little bit darker right over in there as it goes out. Maybe a little bit more here. This is kind of, you're kind of painting a little bit from your memory and imagination. And uh, if it looks visually okay, you kind of let it go. Let it sit there, let it dry. and. See how it turns out. There's going to be some touch-ups as I go along here. We'll kind of strengthen it up a little bit, especially the bank, the edge here. See how that looks kind of thin right now, so we'll probably have to add a little darker uh, shadow or edge to it in there. Okay, now, um, I can't keep the, the uh, paper itself white in through here, so what I, I'm going to come back and I'm just going to take a pinch of my Payne's Gray and mix it in with my uh, blue. And what I have to do is just put a little soft 
uh, wash in and around the trees a little bit, just with kind of softening it up. You, you don't want to make it too, too uh, dark, but uh, just enough to bring out the contrast. Okay. This, this you can kind of put in um, like a almost uh, flat, a flat wash. And you can always do some more with a set later on and give it another coat of a uh, darker shade or shadow and so forth, and just to break it up. But you need that uh, around the trees. Otherwise, when I pull the tape off, uh, you, you'll lose the tree because of the, uh, the, the white of the birch tree will be as as uh, light as the uh, background of the, uh, the snow. So they'll do the same thing over here. Just put a little bit of that blue, just put a little, make it a little bit darker. And that's going to be over on, oops, on this side. Just a little bit of shadow. See where I got to work in here? Push that around up into there. Now, right now, it doesn't look too great, but once I pull the tape off, hopefully it will, will look a lot better. Hopefully. You never know. See what happens. But I, I, I've always enjoyed, once I started doing watercolors, I always enjoyed uh, getting back to paint, painting because I knew uh, that what I like about it is uh, it's not that to overly toxic, uh, but also um, it dries faster and it doesn't have an odor. Paint doesn't have an odor. Not that's that's noticeable at all, you know. So that's good. Let's uh, do some more in here. Okay, I got all a lot of color around those birch trees. Like I said, I can't keep it white against the white because I'd lose the, sh the shape of the birch trees. Okay, what else, what else? Now I know I'm gonna make it a little bit stronger in through here. It's gonna be, uh, when I say stronger, I mean either brighter or, or darker, uh, or I should say lighter and darker or whatnot. Okay. Uh, as long as you get something on there. So I got pretty well, the white really isn't as white as it was. Um, you can take it, quiet it down a little bit. Now, let's see. We're right here. I'm always looking, I'm always going to find that there's something that I have to, uh, to do uh, to finish it off. And that's why today I started a little bit ahead of time. I got the uh, tape on there uh, uh, first because I, if I didn't do that, I, then I'd have trouble as far as taking up too much time, you know, sticking the, the strips of tape down. So I started a little bit ahead of time. I'm just going to make warm that up in there a little bit, kind of break this up a, a little bit, see what I can do with this. Um, maybe I need a little bit of that uh, rose color. I'm just going to make this warmer in there. And uh, maybe this could be darker over in here. Just make that a little bit deeper right up and through there. Oops. Put the paint down and wipe it out with Kind of defeat my purpose here. Okay. And to make the snow fluffy back there, I just take some of that edge off. Make it softer through here. Now, the beauty of watercolor too, you can reactivate your color, like I mentioned earlier. You know, you put it down, you don't like it, you wet it, Hit it with some water and just take that right out of there. Yeah, there you go. All right, it's looking okay. Uh, 
we'll see what what happens after I pull the tape off. Now, um, eventually I'm going to have some shadow going across there, and I'm going to probably do a little bit more uh, strengthening up the water. I need a little bit more contrast in here. You know, you got a dark area, you, you want to kind of introduce another little darker area down through here, uh, maybe a little bit in there where the sunlight doesn't get to it as, as well. See how that perks that up, the water part of it? And uh, maybe some over here. See how that makes the edge show up better? Contour. And it's funny about watercolor. When you first put it on, you, you, you wonder how it's going to take, and then all of a sudden it dries in, and it looks not too bad. And sometimes you look at a picture that you've done, and you say, how did I get that effect? And uh, it, uh, it's not so much how you, how you went about getting that effect, it's what happens to that wet water. See how it gets fuzzy here? That's because it's wet into wet. It gets fuzzy on the edges. Okay, let's pull that out. Pull it down if you want to get the, uh, sort of like a frozen effect, you want to pull that out a little bit there. Okay, right, go right to the edge. All right, now, um, I, I've got a little bit more work to do here. Um, so, um, I'm going to have to uh, let this set up a little bit so that I'm going to pull the tape off, and uh, when I do that, uh, we'll know what else we have to do. There's certain things that you have to let dry before you can kind of do anything else, because if you don't, uh, you're going to get too many blurs where you don't want it to be blurry. Like the background here can be more of a heavier edge here. I don't know if I can get this cleaned up back there. Nope, not with that color. Too much blue. It's all right. It's all right, but it's 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 pretty. It looks nice. And uh, somebody said one time, they said, "Well, you don't see that color, but wouldn't it be nice if you had it in there?" You know. So I've often rem remembered that, obviously, and uh, and I I I kind of apply that. But if you do hit something with that particular color, you want to repeat it somewhere else, you know? Put, put, put it in somewhere else. Kind of harmonizes, pulls everything together a little bit more. Okay, now, let's put a little bit darker here. Try to let this thing dry a little bit so I can kind of take the uh, tape off. Probably can, eventually I'm going to put some shadow, more of, the, more of that sh across here. All right, now, I think that, um, if I need a, that, it's a little bit light through that middle area. There's one thing you have to be careful of, is that you don't want to, see how that kind of cuts it right up in there. So what you have to do sometimes is, is distort that and break that up do something else in there that will take away that, fill that area in. You don't realize that you're doing that sometimes until you take a uh, look at it. Um, but uh, I always try to make something up into here. Um, whether this is going to have a particular focal point, I'm not quite sure. It's supposed to so they say you're supposed to only have one focal point in your painting. And what happens is that if you have too, too, too many areas that are taking your attention away, you, don't, you, you really don't have a, uh, a real strong uh, place where your eye can kind of rest, you know, settle in, looking at a picture. This gets a little bit fuzzy here. I could say that's some steam or something or whatever coming <laughs> coming off a mist coming off the water here okay it's like when sometimes it, it, all of a sudden it gets uh, it's warm and then all of a sudden the temperature changes 
and you get a lot of uh, mist coming off the water type of thing. Okay, so, well, we're going to give that a rest because I've got to uh, work on the trees. I've got to put a lot of shading in and uh, some, uh, add some branches. So let's see what we can do. Um, now, you have to be a little bit careful when you remove the tape. I don't just tear it straight down. I tear it on a 45 degree angle. This is, I put a little added piece in there, so it that's why it broke off. Uh, maybe I can pick pick up where we left off here. Yeah, yeah, there you go. And you just tear that at an angle. See how you can bring that down? Now you can see why I had to put some color and see if you if it's too light, you lose the uh, the shape of the tree. Let's do this side. Looks like this one's kind of. Oops! Another piece I, I pieced in there. When I put that uh, tape down, sometimes the piece of um, plexiglass that I put the tape on isn't long enough, so sometimes I have to add a little bit on the on the end of the um, tape. Let's see if I can catch this thing. Sometimes if I can't get it from one end, I just pick it off on the other. Let's see, there you go. Maybe I can tear this one from the bottom up on an angle so it doesn't damage the uh, paper too much. And then, let's get this out of the way, otherwise I'll have tape sticking my brushes down. Um, uh, let's see. I've got some more over here. All right, that's coming down pretty well. I added a little piece on the end of that to make it go to the edge. All right, 45 degree angle there. And the final piece here of tape. There you go. Now, when you pull the tape off a lot of times, it looks like, uh, well, what it is, it looks like a Band-Aid or something, uh, you know, the edges. So what we have to do is do a little bit of... Um, uh, touching up here. I want to make sure that's dry enough because you know I'm going to take my brush, smaller brush, this is what a number, 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 R number rubbed off, probably around a six or a seven. Um, but I'm just going to come down the edge. And, and we, we said the light source is coming from left to right. So what we're going to do we're just going to put some shadow coming in. Now, I usually put the shadow at the top, the, the whole width of the tree, because uh, I want it to contrast where it goes off to the white. So that's why I fill that in. We're coming down the side of the tree now like this. Right at that, just putting a little shadow coming down the side. I, I need a little bit more color here. What I do is I use, um, for that shading, I use a little bit of my uh, ultramarine and then a little bit of Payne's Gray. So it has not, it has a little blue in it. Right down the side. And as we come down here, we get down to the bottom here, I usually just fill that in too, around the base of the, um, the tree. Just fill that right in. I'm going to put some little sticks or things on around the edge of that. Now, um, again, same thing, we're coming down the right side. I'll try to go a little faster here so I don't take too long. Okay. Then we have to do um, uh, the tip of this. Is, you don't have to worry about that, but I'm going to put some shadow around the base of this one, just around the bottom part. Okay. Now sometimes if that that shading is a little bit too smooth, what I do is just wet it uh, half on and half off with the brushes just to soften the edge. Okay. Let's do these other. 
ones while we're at it. Like a little bit of uh, ultramarine with a touch of paint gray. Come right down the side. There we go. The top can be filled in. Then you're just coming down the side like this. Okay. Probably could have used a larger brush. A larger round. Okay, we're going to come across the bottom here. Just fill that all in. Now that's kind of uh, not contrasting as well with the background. So when I put the cast shadow in, I think that will help that. If this is, this is a little bit too solid, see how I can soften that? Have that blend in so it, it gives it more of a curve to it. It's like a cylinder shape anyways. This one here, we'll have that, fill that in. Now, if you make any little marks in there, you can erase it. Uh, sometimes where the tape left off and I had to add another piece, I just fill it in and put some shadow down the side. Okay. Um, see what else we can add here. Okay. I need to get a little bit more color here. All right, right down the side. Okay, and we're going to do this one. I'm kind of moving along a little bit because you know what happens a lot of times? I start a painting and I don't have time to finish it. So. I want to have time to get more of the uh, branches and things in, more of the shadow around around the base of the tree, maybe some more bushes and things growing out. Let's see what we got here. And uh, sometimes these things can look as if they're broken off at the top or just shaded in. See how that looked like it snapped off, but you want, you can just have that kind of disappear up here. Just fill it in, shade it in. Um, now, um, okay, that looks pretty good. Now, I'm just looking now to see where I need contrast. See where that's a little bit too light? I need something that's a little bit darker against the, the snow. So that will, that will bring that out a little bit more uh, shadow around the base here. This one could be a little bit darker. Um, same way we'll over here. Give it another coat. And maybe this one here. Fill in, in across the bottom. Uh, okay, you can get the idea how that works. All right, fill that in. Down here, maybe a little bit more contrast there. So it's a matter of getting all that contrast in. Now, um, I mentioned about the cast shadows. That, that really helps a lot. Like, the, here's the light coming in, and so you can put some shadows kind of breaking across this way. Okay, we'll put another one over here at the base, like that. That could be a little bit wider there. And it may have a little bit more color or a darker color into it across the snow. See, the darker the color, the, now let's say if I make this darker here, it just makes it show up so it looks like the snow is lighter against the contrast of that darker shade. This one may have a little pinch of shadow there, right, right across in there. This one can kind of break across, maybe shadow across, up into here, something like that. But sometimes the shadows add a lot to your painting. It really helps. Okay, make that a little darker through there. There you go. Okay, if this looks kind of funny there, what I do is take and wet it down and soften that out. You can do that with just about anything. Now, uh, what I've got to do next is put some markings, uh, some little markings on the tree. 
you want to make sure the paint's dry enough because if you come in and you start putting all these little markings in, they may blur where you don't want them to, but you just put some little, little marks on the tree. That was very wet, so that's going to be kind of runny. Sometimes I, I let it go, or I, I can take a bigger brush, kind of soften it out a little bit, control it, do something else with it, so soften that down. What you want to try to avoid uh, is not doing as much uh, of that. You don't want to make it look like steps. So sometimes you have to kind of uh, soften it out or just soften it and blot it. If it's coming on too strong, I just hit it with a paper towel and soften that out. Somebody asked me one time, they said, how come you can uh, be talking so much while you're painting? I said, well, you, you get used to that. I said, I said that that's one of the few things I can do at the same time is uh, paint and talk at the same time. But other things I have trouble with. Um, I was in a play one time where I had to drag the body of the person across the stage. And what was happening there, uh, I had some lines to say. Well, I'd stop dragging and say my lines. And the director said, no, no, you can't do that. You've got to be talking while you drag the person. And I had to go through quite a few takes on that one before I was able to uh, be talking while I dragged the person. So, you know, it's funny things like that. The old saying is, you, uh, you can't chew gum and walk at the same time. That's usually what they, how they describe it. But I seem to find it okay to be able to talk about what I'm doing while I'm painting. And somebody said to me, well, how can you do something like that? I said, well, I'm not talking about too, much other, too many other things. I said, I'm just trying to talk about what I'm trying to do with the emphasis on trying to do, huh? Right? <laughs> to get that. <laughs> but uh, sometimes it works. Okay, here we go. I'm just... This is, this is all the uh, finishing uh, touch-up work you do. The, the finishing touches. They, they talk about all the, when you do all the texturing and marks on the tree and all that, they, they call it the, um, uh, sort of like, a, what's the word for it? Uh, I'll think about it in a second. Could, like a graffiti, possibly? You know, like a graffiti type thing? Yeah, linear, drawing, just lines, putting in some texture. And you know what happens on a tree, too? Sometimes a bark is peeling. So, yep. if that's too dark, I just hit it, see it? And let's take some of the paint out away from that. Okay, now this little shadow needs to be darker. So that's easy enough. I'm just going to put a little darker color there. See how it's darker in there? See how that will show up? Brings out the base. This one's a little same way. You want to bring that out a little bit more. Just darken it, shade it in. Um, sometimes it looks like a little blur there. Uh, I leave it in, but sometimes certain areas have to be sharpened up, so you might have to kind of come into there and, and kind of bring that out. Um, I, I want this to be a little bit a little strong, like maybe like the background there is. It repeats the same sort of value. See that? You pick it up in there, it kind of carries you up stronger there, maybe a little stronger edge there. Maybe a little bit more in there. You want to take that line out, you just soften the edge down. Take some of that edge away. Now, there's a lot of little texturing that needs to be done, so what I'm going to do is take my little rigger, my little thin brush, 
and I'm just going to put some thin markings uh, on on the, the wood and put oops not that color <laughs> ah that's a all right what am I doing here yeah I hit the hit some green I don't want green in there as much so what I do is just take that and uh, blot it down and that could be like moss growing on the the wood see you just kind of take it out but however if you do that then if you erase that and you have to give some, something else a little bit of green so let's have some moss on this one I don't know if that's going to be you know when you try to get green you can't you can't get back to it but I'll just lighten that up yeah you don't notice that much that's what I like about watercolors. You can can erase your mistakes if you do it fast enough so before it can settle in. Now these are just little markings that you're going to put on the the birch tree. Oh, I'm still getting green on my brush. Yeah, come up and really get some more really stronger paints gray here. Go right over that. Oops, that's too much. Uh, now, wait a minute, I, I really got to, I don't like the shape of that, that's why. Let's just take that out of there. See how you can erase that? I don't, it still looks funny too. Sometimes certain things bother me a little bit, so I just erase it. There you go. And just come back probably when it's a little bit drier. Now the big thing I I never get around to a lot of times is putting some of the branches in. Now strategically you want to kind of put these branches where it will really help. See where I added a little extra tape on the edge here? Well, that's a good place to have another little branch come out of the tree. And when you do that, you come out wide and then you lift up and go thin. See, see how the branch works? And then you can have some little something, another little twig or something coming off that, see. So now, that that's, can be left to the way it is. It's got kind of snapped off. Birch trees do that. Now you see you got all that solid area. That, that's a great place to put a branch to break up that solid shape in there. And uh, that could be a little bit thicker. You know, you put some other little things coming down off of that. See how that works? It breaks that up a little bit. Now I've got two branches going to the left. How about doing something? You want this tree to be in front of that one, so why why not have a branch come out that breaks up to here, see that from this tree? And uh, then we're gonna break up this space over here, put something else off there. And uh, you could put add as many little things as you want as far as branches go. Wherever you want to break the shape up. You can add some branches. Usually on uh, birch trees, the branches are on the higher upper third of the tree. Usually there's not much growing down near the base of the tree. But I'm going to put one, just break it. See how big shape here? Why don't we have something coming out of there? Just to break that up. Now, um, you know what I'm doing also? I'm, I'm stalling a little bit because I'm, I'm trying to let this dry a little bit more so I can put in some more texture around the, the base. But it might be okay now. Um, what I'm going to do now is just go back and add some little twiggies coming out of the out of the foreground like this. Just add a little bit of texture in there. And um, I can add some, actually I, I use this for some more little thin branches too, up here. There you go, break that up. Um, wherever, well this is okay, but it needs to be a little darker. Something like that, a little bit more noticeable. And then around this base of this tree, again you can do some little, you notice how I lift up on the brush when I do this? Yeah. So that the um, it goes from thick to thin, and I put some more over here. Oops, 
<laughs> get carried away. <laughs> there you go. Some, some little things are crossed in here. You can have some little, little you could take and spatter a little bit, you know, create some more texture. Now, I neglected a lot of this texturing in here. We've got to add some more. The reason I did that is because what was happening, I was running out of uh, faith. Now, I'm running out of time, so what I'm going to do is very quickly take the tape off. What I did is I put tape around the contour, and uh, it sort of acts as an artificial uh, mat. Let's see if I can do that so you can see what this thing looks like. There's still a little bit of touch-up to do, uh, but I think I got the, the majority of it in there. See how that tape cleans up the edges, so see how nice that comes out. Now, what I need to do, uh, I need to do a little bit more texturing on the branches, and then it should come out okay. So, anyways, uh, thanks for being with us, and like I always close with, the brush is up, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.